Jephthah has been bid to come and lead his people in war. When he has a moment of doubt, he's visited by an angel and he makes a vow before God that he should sacrifice the first living person he sees after that victory. Well, that living person turns out to be his daughter. It's, um, yeah, it's hell on earth, it's the moment of realisation that this is the person that welcomed him back and this is the person I have to execute. And so you can imagine that uh, the tensions run enormously high between uh, all of us, in fact, all family members and prospective family members. And in this case it's even worse. The possibility of death has been caused by something you have said, half thinking a half-thought promise, and this is a terrible tragedy. It's, I would imagine it's something it's impossible for somebody to live with. The whole thing of having a daughter in the opera and having my own daughters, it's very deep, it's, it's a wonderful piece. Rather than go against it, she um, offers herself as a willing sacrifice um, because she understands uh, the, the strength of, of her father's faith uh, and how important it is to him. Just being a father is extremely helpful in terms of the role. I have two children, one daughter is two years old, not 17, um, and I have a new son who's only three weeks old. easy to tap into that emotion and it does make it very difficult to play the role especially the um, the sort of most focused bits regarding the execution in fact it has to happen there's no choice I only need to sort of think about it for a second for it to send me into pieces to the, the idea of it in reality so so it as long as I can just sort of knock on the door of that feeling done a lot of soul searching in this and um, we've actually stayed on, on the, in the rehearsal room absolutely dumbstruck because it's, it's so shocking, it's, it's, it's such a personal journey for everybody, every character. Katie Mitchell is one of the most important directors of our time. She's an associate director of the National Theatre and now a major figure in Europe. This production is designed by Katie Mitchell's long-term design collaborator, Vicky Mortimer. It's a very beautiful piece of work. I mentioned that this is set in the Old Testament. Well, we're not going to stage the Old Testament biblical world with people in togas and beards or whatever. Although it's a story from, from the Bible, it's, it's a very uh, old story, it's, it's actually um, Katie set it in the kind of post-war era. <laughs> time that's more relevant as opposed to today, it just means that you can relate to it. One of the stars of this show is actually the designer of the show, Vicky, um, who put together all the costumes and the sort of visual world of it with Katie Mitchell. And uh, one of the beautiful things is the costumes across the board are absolutely stunning. With Katie Mitchell, you you have um, a producer who comes from the stage, and therefore you work a lot of the detail and the psychological and the small movements uh, in a way that you would in a play. So you get that added layer. He's a fantastic specialist. He's he's wonderful. He understands early music uh, inside and out, and as such, he has an enormous energy and, and breadth of understanding of this score to offer to the orchestra. This is a very special piece uh, for Handel. It's the last original piece he wrote in his life. 
I do things on early instruments um, in a period way that represents the way they did it in the 18th century, not just for historical reasons, but because I think it makes the sound more vivid, there's more drama, uh, more energy, and many more contrasts to be had when you do it that way. The chorus are great. <laughs> they make an awesome sound. If you're, you know, I stood in front of a lot of choruses. This chorus really make your ears ring. And they have a very, I mean, they're famous. They're a very famous part of this company, and deservedly so. In his attempt to kill her softly, I suppose, he sings the most beautiful aria of Wafter Angels, which is well known for the piece. And in this production, it's incredibly moving because it is an attempt to comfort at the same time as preparing to kill her. score is so direct. The musical language um, speaks without any layer of um, sort of prescriptive knowledge. What I would hope is that people are deeply moved by a story that will go straight to your heart. It, it's amazingly powerful. Amazingly powerful. It's very truthful. She can sing fantastically, but she keeps this girlish vulnerability in the sound and in her movements. And it's really, you know, there are a lot of, there have been tears just watching her in rehearsals. A lot of people came to see it, people who hadn't actually been to see an opera before. And the one thing they all said was that they actually didn't notice that people were singing. The story was so powerful and so shocking, I guess. They got drawn into it very quickly. We don't generally sacrifice our children, but um, we do worry about their death all the time. This production actually puts it there in front of you. This is very rare. Above your hands, your prayers.